Can I read that passage I read earlier on from Philippians chapter 3, verse 7? I once thought these things were valuable, but now I consider them worthless because of what Christ has done. Yes, everything else is worthless when compared with the infinite value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For his sake, I have discarded everything else, counting it all as garbage, so that I could gain Christ and become one with him. Just, just reflect on that just for a minute. Jesus also spoke in Luke uh, 4, verse 8. He quoted scripture. He quoted that the scriptures say, you must worship the Lord your God and serve only him. And Romans 12, 1 to 2, which is quite famous, and said, So, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all he has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind he will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person, by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. And then John 4, verses 23 to 24 state this. But the time is coming, indeed it is now here, when true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. The Father is looking for those who will worship him that way. For God is spirit, so those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. I'm having one of those mornings this morning. Who likes dancing? Who likes a bit of a boogie? Who likes, you know, we don't have to be good. It's not about being good, is it? It's about, you know, who likes dancing? Who likes, seriously, come on, come on. Now, hang on, someone not even got your hands up, and I have seen you dance. So don't even give me the hand down thing. Who likes dancing? Yeah, who likes, why, why do you dance? And be honest, don't, don't, don't give me the pious answer, please. All right, please do not give me the Christianese answer. Really, that, that's going to, why do you like, why do you like dancing, Carling? Because it's fun. Because it's fun. Anybody else? Why do you like dancing? Express my joy. Express your joy. I'm happy. Okay. Express my joy and exercising. And exercising. See, there you go. That's a good one. Thanks, Bernie. Releases stress. Releases stress. Does it release stress, Dennis? No, 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 no. No, that's serious. That you enjoy it because it releases stress. It releases stress. It actually frees you, doesn't it? Okay, anybody else? Go on. Let your hair down. Yeah, some of us have got less hair to let down. 
Socialising, thank you. Connect with the music. Connect with the music. You lost the weight. <laughs> Loss of weight. Excellent, that's cool. So I could do with considerably more dancing. It loosens your body. Like, it loosens your body? Yeah. You feel free. You feel free. Excellent. So do you enjoy it all? You enjoy dancing? Some of us are like, well, no. And the reason I don't like dancing, if I'm really honest, is because I'm embarrassed. That's the truth. You actually want to dance, but you think everybody's looking at you. Now, for those of you know that I've been to a few weddings of some people, and I've, I've gone as the minister, and I've performed the, the, I've performed the ceremony as the minister, and then I've gone to the reception do, and then there's been dancing. And I've waited for the key song to come on that will make me get up and dance. You ever been there? People, come on, dance. I will wait until the song that gets my juices flowing, and then I will be up there, and you are not then going to get me off the dance floor. Okay? Now, there's one particular wedding. I really, it, it's church family wedding. I really can't remember whose it was, but I think it shocked most of the people that did not know me that the pastor dances. To the point, there was a point I realized that the camera would not leave me alone. I should have taken the collar off. It might have helped. But we enjoy dancing. Now, I do not dance particularly well. I've been told... Oh, I'm all right. Okay, I've been told by Carlene, who knows her rhythm, that I'm not too bad. But it doesn't matter about how you dance. It's the fact that you're dancing, and you're being free, and you're enjoying it, aren't you? Now, here's the question I'm going to ask you. Why at church do we struggle to dance? Be really honest. You'll dance at a party, won't you? What's the difference? Now, sorry, this is not a nag. This is a curiosity statement. Now, what's your go-to song? Think about your go-to song at a party that will make you dance. Now, I'm liable to upset some of you right now, and I apologize, but not unreservedly. No, 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 to dance to, Star Wars, really? So, um, this is one of my go-to songs. That was good, wasn't it? Hey, you had fun. <laughs> now, that wasn't that one. <laughs> oh, well, there's really, I've got to lose that weight. <laughs> Point being, I felt free. Now, some people, oh dear. about this she's gonna she's definitely gonna force me to go swimming again so come on I know I've had a cold but that shouldn't justify this normally there's a time that people turn around and say 
oh, I can't get on the dance floor. I've got to have a quick drink before I get up there. <laughs> Dancing is releasing. I'm really glad that Dennis said what he said. It gives you, loses the stress, doesn't it? It lets things go, it makes you laugh, it enjoys. And we enjoy dancing. And I will stop breathing. <laughs> oh, come on. I'm, no, I don't need to sit down, it's just I can't seem to catch my breath. Let me not talk for a minute. Turn to the person next to you and tell them what is your go-to dance tune, go. Okay. Now, partly, can I just say about that particular song I like? If anybody knows the song Footloose, you know where it comes from. It comes from the movie Footloose, and it's all about a pastor. For reasons of tragedy in his life, he, the story goes that he, he, he banned all musical dance because of... Um, he preached that it was evil and all that because of what happened, some tragedy to him and his family years earlier. And it's the whole scene is in the original 1980s version is Kevin Bacon is this sort of brash young man who's walked in and is going to release, oh, my breathing will calm down, will release, uh, release and get people to actually dance. And actually the pastor himself eventually starts dancing with his wife outside because he suddenly realizes it's released. Now, we all know the movie, and we all know it's about freedom. Point is, actually, in the lyrics, lyrics of the song, it actually says, kick off your Sunday shoes. Kick off your Sunday shoes. Who's wearing their Sunday shoes this morning? And I don't mean metaphoric, and I don't mean realistically, I mean metaphorically. Who's wearing their Sunday shoes? When you come in to worship the Lord on a Sunday morning with fellow believers, who walks in with their Sunday shoes? I mean, I most certainly am not wearing my Sunday shoes. Well, I am, but deliberately yellow laces. Why not? Why not be joyful? All things bright and beautiful. Yeah? All bright and beautiful. The Bible passages I read were all to do with worshipping the Lord and him being our true focus. Paul is saying he counts everything garbage, and I'm not going to tell you what the original Greek translation, our real word that we should actually use in that English version, begins with an S, ends in a T, and has us two other letters in the middle. If you actually took it to its nth degree, what it originally meant in the Greek, it is the word that we would use for excrement, but which is the four-letter word. But we like to Victorianize our Bibles. We don't like to offend people. So what Paul is saying, everything is counted rubbish for knowing God and being one with him. Knowing our Lord Jesus Christ and being one with him. To be a true worshipper. To be free of all the stuff that holds... And it's not stuff as in material stuff so much, but it's stuff that we hold before us and God. Do you remember right at the beginning, those are here, I asked you to reflect on all of your achievements over the years. You know, I left school with three O-levels to my name. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. 
more than you. And my parents clearly, clearly wanted me to have more, but you know, and I wanted more, and I thought I'd done much better than I had done, but hey, there you go. Revision is normally a good thing. So I commit that now, I'm 49 in front of my mother. Hi, mum. So, um, so three, three GCCs, one out, go sell, car, uh, sell houses for a living and then sell cars. Didn't need anything else, that was fine. And then I go and got a degree in theology. Thanks to the church here releasing me and able to get it. That's God's grace. And now I'm a reverend. And I count that all but absolute garbage, I'll use the version there, for knowing Christ Jesus. It doesn't mean anything. Unless I want to be a true worshipper, you want to be a true worshipper of Jesus, all that stuff means nothing. You might have a particular status in your, your job or in your community. For knowing Jesus and being one with him, it means nothing. And I would like to humbly suggest it, if you're holding that still up as, I don't know, so if I held it up as, well, I'm the Reverend Warren McNeil, and I went in with that attitude towards God, I'm not being one with him. Because it means nothing. To be a real worshipper of God, it means nothing. And we need setting free from it. So coming in here on a Sunday morning, if we all came in as true worshippers of the Lord, of one with God, and we stuck the right go-to tune on for you, would you kick off your Sunday shoes? I don't mean you have to be dancing. That would be fun, wouldn't it? Maybe one day we'll just clear the chairs. What does it mean for you to be a true worshipper of God? I want you just to think for that for a minute and then answer the If you're brave enough, answer the question. Stick your hand in the air when you're ready. But what does it actually mean, do you think, to be a true worshipper of God? It means that I have everything, all the blessing God promised. And to be in one accord with the Lord, it's a very good thing and it's a happy feeling. And you know you have someone you can call on in time of trouble. Thank you. Thank you, Bernie. For me, is in whatever we do, that love is like the first thing in whatever we do, just love. For me, is that true worship. Thank you. For me, it means um, bearing all to him and um, worshiping, him, worshiping, him, worshiping him and letting him know how weak or how strong you are. Bearing it all and worshiping him with all your heart. That means just letting him know how you feel. Thank you. Having a relationship with God and continuing to nurture that relationship. Thank you. Being a true worshipper, as in it says in John, is worshipping in spirit and truth. God is spirit, amen? So everything that we gain here materially means nothing in worship to him. So when we worship the Lord, and worship is not just singing, obviously, is it is done in spirit. It's done in spirit because he is spirit. Therefore, when we worship him, it's done from a spiritual place. And the physical outworkings that we display are born out of a spiritual place. You know, I, I danced a footloose like a nutball, 
but it's born out of, because it hits something in here. It, it, the beat, everything, just hits something. And we also worship him in truth. The two go together. It's spirit and truth. It's not in spirit and in truth. It's, it's, it's the two are together. Truth is that Jesus Christ is the true risen son of God. And you can only worship the Father because you recognize that Jesus is the true Son of God. And he died on that cross and rose again. And that's a truth. And you can only bear all full worship out of that truth and the way that your life then develops out of that truth. Because when you, actually dis when you say, yes, Jesus really is the way, the truth, and the life, you have to commit to that. It's no good being wishy-washy. It's no good sitting on the fence. There's no such thing, by the way, sitting on the fence. That's actually a myth. You're either for the Lord or not for the Lord. If you think, oh, I'm just sitting on the fence, then you're not for the Lord. It's that simple. Anyway, that's truth. So we worship in spirit and in truth. Now, I like what Hannah said, because this is something I picked up on this week. Truth is not just about the fact that truth, that Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior. Truth is also worshiping him in a true place where you're at. If you're not honest with yourself and with God at the same time, then you cannot be a true worshiper of God, as in you're not being fully you. Does that make sense? I'm being real. If you do not like someone, it's no good sort of sitting there going, oh, I do love them really because the Lord loves them and he thinks he's wonderful. Be honest with God and say, I hate that person. Help me to love them, but I'm being honest, I hate that person. Don't know where that's come from. Maybe it's my own baggage, I don't know. Love you all, by the way. But we have to worship God from a place of truth. You do not come in Sunday, or you don't even walk around during the week with your Sunday shoes on. Sunday shoes, by the way, is the false thing. Sunday shoes can be restrictive. Sunday shoes can hold you down, I think as the song goes. Now I've just remembered that. I'm now quoting lyrics from a song. But the Sunday shoes, they are not spirit and truth. The Sunday shoes are actually of a worldly construct. The Sunday shoe can be your insecurity. You're coming from a place of insecurity. You don't think God actually loves you. That's a place of insecurity. You might be coming from a place of performance. You want somebody to recognize how wonderful you are, so you put on a Sunday shoe. You can be coming from a place of fear. Insecurity and fear are two very different things. That's a Sunday shoe. And you walk around in those Sunday shoes seven days of the week. Be honest about it. Be truthful with God, and he'll help you take those shoes off. To be a real worshiper of God is to focus on him. Worshipping the Lord is vitally important for the whole of your life. Now bear with me a minute. You with me so far? Okay. We sung that song, all things bright and beautiful, all creatures great. Oh, throat's drying up. Let's do full set. All things bright and beautiful. Anyway, moving on. We sung that song, a golden oldie. And if I'm honest with you, it's one of those songs I thought, I don't want to ever sing it in church because it reminds me of school. And my three O levels that I got. No, no, I'm joking. But actually, what I felt for this morning when that song was, we, it, it is an act of worship to recognize that all things have come from God. So when you're walking down the street in your Sunday shoes, you're getting the analogy of Sunday shoes at the moment, aren't you? Yeah? We can be trudging along in our Sunday shoes and yet missing all of the stuff that God has created. And that helps us to worship him. I, what we're doing, when we look at all the things that are bright and beautiful, we're worshipping God. We're thanking him for it. It's helping our focus. Does that, yeah? It helps our focus. Now, we don't have very many purple-headed mountains in Greenford. We have the Northala Fields Mounds. 
They don't look particularly purple-headed. But we do have birds. Even the wind and even the rain you can worship God in and thank him for it. Why? Because it feeds the ground that grows the food that you consume inside your stomach. It is about our everyday focus. To take our focus off trudging along in our Sunday shoes is to be able to look up and see everything that God has created and give him thanks for that. And then when you give thanks to God and worship him for it, it takes the focus of what is holding you back and holding you down. Worship is really important. The walls of Jericho were broken down because they worshipped the Lord. They trudged around, they followed him, they actually did as they were told. That's worship. Doing as God tells you to do is worship. Whenever the armies went in to do something, they worshipped God first, didn't they? Trumpets blasting, people singing. You look at the Psalms, it's all worship. Worship changes the circumstances. Singing can change the circumstances. Don't know about you, whenever you felt absolutely at your lowest ebb, or something has got you completely gripped in fear, maybe, stick some worship music on, start actually letting yourself go, releasing it, and it speaks into the fear, a truth of who God is. Amen? I've currently got a brilliant tune I love playing, which is Tremble. Jesus, you make the darkness tremble. It breaks something whenever I play that. It's one that we are going to learn to sing here at some point. But it's just not about music. It's about focusing on God. The centrality of worship breaks things. Now, it doesn't provide healing all the time. It doesn't provide um, release from a situation. But what it does do is provide peace in the midst of the situation. It helps you recognizing who God is in the midst of the situation. It helps you recognize his bigness. It recognizes how free you are as a child of God when we worship him. Today's word live really made me laugh, actually. I've just remembered this. Psalm 90. Help us to number our days. Exactly. But help us to number our days. And the little blurb they described was really good. And I nearly, nearly used it in the prayer with Dorothy and Tracy. But I thought, no, I won't do that. But let's not. It says, don't number our years. Help, ask God to help us number our days. Because it's what's going on today is how we should glorify God. Not worrying about maybe the next birthday. I mean, I'm going to hit 50 this year. I know, I really don't look it, do I? <laughs> look, you look more about 60, Warren. So, so, I must admit, age never bothers me. Really doesn't. In grand scheme of terms, it does. But I found myself at the beginning of this year, for about two days, going, I'm going to be 50. Oh, my life. I'm, excuse me, anybody that's above 50 right now. I'm getting old. That's what it felt like. And then I suddenly thought, oh, I've only got 20 more years in ministry. Well, you go through these things in your head. And then you start thinking about your pension. And then I start thinking, oh, gosh, I've got Keris Gant University, blah, blah, blah. And it suddenly all dawned on me that I'm, I'm, you know, I've really only got 20 years. Only 20 years, right? And then you sit there and you think, actually, let's not worry about 20 years. Let's worry about the next 20 minutes. Well, not worry, but you know what I mean. Let's focus on worshipping God. So you could be in a situation at the moment that you're sitting there thinking, I've got no way out. And all you're doing is worrying about the next few days ahead. Worship God. Watch him change the circumstances or at least change your perspective. Worship him, because the whole point of this centrality of worshipping the Lord is not just about singing. You can worship the Lord however you want to worship. You can worship the Lord through art. You can worship the Lord through reading. You can worship the Lord how you want. But it's not about what you do. It's about who you are in him. So I don't know about your Sunday shoes, 
but take them off. They're holding you down. By the way, when I talk about that, I don't want some people sitting there thinking, well, you're expecting all to get up and start dancing and doing all this. No, 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 it's not about that. It's about what's going on in here. It's about what is gripping this and gripping this. This is your Sunday shoes. These are the things that are holding you down because, well, it's not done like that. Or I can't be like that. I will look silly in front of people. Don't be daft. This is a really bad situation. There's no way God can change this. Oh, yes, he can. I don't feel like worshipping God today. Do you know where I'm at? Yes, he does. Worship him in spirit and truth in all of what that means. So right at the beginning this morning, I believe God really wants to release, and I didn't know, didn't connect the talk with what I said earlier on. Does that make sense? I believe that God really wants to release some minds and hearts this morning. But I can't do it for you. God can only do it for you up to a point as far as you will allow him. So this morning, carry away worshipping God. Because everything else doesn't matter. There's nothing wrong in doing other things. But ultimately, they're not going to release you. So no matter what's going on, if you're up here, fantastic. If you're down here, not fantastic, but it's a good place to start being honest with God. It's right, you two, if I just talk briefly about that conversation we had this morning, real brief, about things not working. Just nod. All right. Yeah, just not. Just tell me it's okay. I'm telling you it's okay. Yeah. Well, there were, um, the guys over there were having a conversation, uh, a really deep spiritual conversation about um, Xbox and Playstations. And having a go, listen, we all got them. Most of us play them. Nothing wrong with them, just as long as they don't take the place of Jesus. Anyway, another, moving on. So they were talking about um, sometimes they're not working. And then I happened to walk up, rock up, and I said, oh, well. I remember I wanted to watch something on my iPlayer. And I wanted to watch it and it wasn't working. I'm like, why are you not working? Now, I must explain, at this point, I'm actually not in a great place. My head is full of worry, full of concern. And what I'm doing, the reason I'm going onto the iPlayer is to, so I can be distracted from what's bothering me. I want to escape. It's not working. Internet was fine. Communication between the box and the thing was fine. It refused to work. I'm not technophobe. I know how to fix these things. Sledgehammer. And, no, no. I know how to fix these things. And I'm like, why are you not working? Come on, work. And then just in that brief moment, I heard God go, because I want to talk to you. Come and spend some time with me. So I spent time with Jesus instead. Didn't feel like worshipping him, but I started to worship him started quoting who he was it wasn't dancing and singing I just was quoting who he was recognizing who he was into that situation and then I started asking him to deal with that situation asking him to I almost prophesied that he would actually deal with it guess what I got released I had peace it's the best thing I could have done and I felt happy Guess what? iPlayer started working again. So, bargain hunt. It's my go-to place to escape. Anyway, point being is that don't escape or try to escape from what's going up here. Spend time worshipping God in the midst of it. Kick off your Sunday shoes. Release yourself in worship to him. Allow him to set you free. And it doesn't have to be a fear. It doesn't have to be a worry. It could be just the fact you don't feel like a child of God. Start allowing him to work in that. Worship him. Amen? Okay. Take a few moments for yourself. We do hope you've enjoyed and benefited from this presentation. 
to learn more about what the Bible teaches us and how to apply this to our everyday lives, check out our biblical teaching videos at gbcweb.tv.